I am Tommy and this is Surfer of Life. Today I'm in Lauttasaari, Helsinki. And right beside me sits Aleksi Litovara. You have won the World Cup in uh, halfpipe, snowboarding. You are an international keynote speaker, mental coach, business coach and a mindfulness instructor. You run your own company, Laidback Productions. Aleksi Litovara, welcome to Surfer of Life. Thank you, Tommy. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, hello to all the lovely listeners. First of all, uh, tell me something about the polar bear Yepa. <laughs> Yepa. Uh, yeah, that uh, came to our family just a couple of days ago when I was uh, at the WWF uh, organization. I did this uh, short uh, pro bono mindfulness uh, moment for the workers, a uh, little bit some some techniques for people to. Uh, for like a stress reduction and also uh, to to strengthen concentration in an open office uh, context and uh, yeah it was really fun and I got this uh, Yepa polar bear well I, I I gave gave it the name Yepa Yepa it's like Finnish and it's something like yeah right it's something good so so that's an uh, important thing <laughs> thing for the name. So yeah, it was really, really fun. Yepa is part of the family now. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I said, because I also got uh, uh, like a smaller uh, thing. I, uh, I I said to the people that uh, I I take this polar bear myself and give the smaller thing to the, to my daughter. But of course, <laughs> it's the vice versa. <laughs> she she took Yepa right away <laughs> to her arms. For well, sure. Uh, you live in Lauttasaari. Have you always lived here or what did you become a Lauttasaari lining? <laughs> uh, well, 10 years ago, uh, I was uh, living uh, before in uh, Katajanokka, so in, in <coughs> center of, uh, or more, <laughs> more closer to the center of Helsinki, but always been living in Helsinki, except small, <laughs> small time in, well, not so small, but uh, youth time in Vanta. I always want to know about the people's history and uh, you as a snowboarder, you also have a history in sports, a long-term history. And what about you in your childhood? Childhood was what kind of child were you? Were you active kid? Uh well, yeah, yeah. I I wanted to do things, and uh, I really loved uh, sports and and uh, learning stuff. And but and also, I was super super shy. So it was really like uh, I needed a lot of courage to to go to things where there was many people. For example, even starting football was scary for me because I, I I was joining a club and and of course it was <laughs> scary at the, at first. So, but also like sports was the, like a big influence of of mental. Uh, growth and and all all good uh, uh, t- things in in life. You be- became a very good snowboarder. Did you have a dream as a child that you're gonna be a professional snowboarder or uh, some other like football player? Or you said you went for football. Yeah, yes. Um, I actually uh, remember that uh, when I was I don't know maybe four years old. Um, I I imagined that I was uh, uh, like a foreign uh, football player, and uh, I was giving uh, like an interview in English. So I was just talking like, <laughs> like yeah, that's <laughs> that's what the football stars <laughs> you know tell to the media. 
And uh, well, yeah, that that practice <laughs> uh, eventually it was uh, it was helpful. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, like uh, I guess it. I've always had uh, some kind of dream of of uh, like a sports star or uh, or or movie star or or pop star or whatever. So at least I got got one <laughs> one of those. <laughs> <laughs> How did you become a snowboarder? How did you start that? Mm. Well, um, actually, the short answer is Juicy Fruit uh, TV commercial because they they had, uh, I think it was 80s. Yeah, yeah, it was still 80s that they run this uh, TV commercial and uh, it was, uh, you know, they had snowboarding and and it was sun sun was shining and snow was like going in the air and neon colors and <laughs> stuff like that that and and it looked so fun and so like super laid back and people were having fun and I'm like wow this is this is really uh, like a sport for me and um actually I had started skateboarding some years before and uh, and I had been into a skateboarding competition and I, I got really, really big uh, like competition, um, I don't know, like a panic or, <laughs> or I was super afraid of uh, competitions and I thought that, okay, snowboarding is so laid back that it it's impossible that there's competition so this is this is something for me and well of course i was luckily i was i was wrong <laughs> what about then you told me that you were scared of competing what about in snowboarding well you became a very good competitor but uh... Was it like that also in snowboarding? Well, was it laid back at the beginning or how did it go? Uh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, it was laid back in the beginning. And then maybe after one or two years um, at Serena Ski, the local ski resort, uh, they started uh, organizing this Monday competition. And uh, at first, of course, like I, I just totally froze. I'm like, oh, well, this is, you know, it's not for me. You know, I, I should just like forget it and, and stuff like that. But then around that time, um, uh, my mom was um, was learning about NLP and, and different uh, mental techniques. So uh, she uh, teached me a couple of exercises, uh, and and one exercise was really like really really mind mind blowing, uh, and I I got this experience that uh, when I concentrate on right things and 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 in right way, and also imagine myself really vividly and really like it would happen right at this moment i can strengthen my skills to to succeed in in difficult things and it really um, opened my mind to to the possibilities that i could could have because before that i was having kind of this fixed mindset that uh, i'm i'm born loser uh, but that it was really like fast change that uh, the old uh, belief just broke and I, I could uh, use this like growth mindset more like, okay, uh, like this is just where I am right now, how, how I can get better. Of course, you know, it takes a long time to, to really like, <laughs> you know, live, uh, live the, the experience and live the... Uh, that it comes true. Of course, it's not happening in one second, but uh, the the exercise was really, it was short exercise and it, it was really like a big, big game changer. Now there's, there's a lot of competition already in very early age, especially in the, well, a lot of sports in Finland, of course, ice hockey probably still the biggest one, but it seems like it starts very early and people start competing and, they want to be successful to be able to participate in one team or whatever. And 
Of course, there is this uh, lack of self-confidence for many kids. You think that there should be early stage already when bringing these methods, these mental methods to the kids to help them out? Uh, yeah, I think uh, some some methods, like, uh, of course, you know, it, it needs to be age uh, appropriate. And, and of course, like, uh, like when my, my daughter was at kindergarten, I was there like teaching a little bit uh, mindfulness skills and it was more about you know like telling stories and and putting a little bit like this mindfulness meditation twist to it so like from the child point of view you know it could have been just whatever else uh, play that they were doing so it wasn't anything like super uh, special but i think yeah it, it is important to really uh, teach these skills like kind of like like self leadership skills and how how people can uh, uh you know affect uh, their you know thoughts and and what's happening you know inside uh, inside you and 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 how to relate to different feelings and and life uh, events because well at least back in the days in the school nobody <laughs> teached and told us uh, to do that uh, we, we just uh, were collecting knowledge and of course nowadays you know the knowledge is in in, in the internet uh, and i think it's it's more and more relevant for also young kids uh, uh, how to you know like be be a self-leader and also how to be in interaction with uh, with people and and and, and in different uh, situations i think in some eastern countries uh, not sure was it tibet or mongolia or something maybe maybe those countries over there it is part of the education system already and mm. has been many many years like hundreds of years yeah already so maybe they are a little bit ahead of us yeah if you think about the mindset part yes exactly <laughs> you get that then um, you you get those tools to help you out to be able to concentrate and get over your fears as a competitor uh, did you use those methods just before you went for a well half pipe or jump or whatever you did that back in the days Did you have sort of a methods you used? Yeah, Just. yeah. Of course, like nowadays, you know, there's many, many methods. Uh, but um, uh, I think, well, of course, I didn't know any any better back in the days. I just had like couple, couple tools, and uh, I think it's that's uh, really good, so that you really get good in in those couple. You don't need like thousand different tools you just need like some some that <laughs> that work for you and uh what i had was um this vivid um, imagination uh technique uh how to really like inside inside the head with uh like different senses like i i was seeing myself also like from from my own eyes like from that point of view and sometimes from from the outside so a little bit different perspectives seeing yourself succeed in in uh, in uh, different uh, uh, tricks and, and learning new tricks <clears throat> and then uh, also uh, after uh, uh, like successful trick uh, i pushed uh, like with my thumb to to my another palm hands palm so that way i was uh, like anchoring this good feeling of of su success so in in uh, this uh, difficult situations i could uh, you know refresh my my mind and body to the feeling of you know like successful trick so that helped uh, you know to to cope with the the pressure or the fear of the situation of course it's it's not like 
black and white that you know you push your your palm and then everything is just you know nice and perfect of course it's it's not like that of course like sometimes it, it could help a, a lot and sometimes you know not not so much or not not at all um but uh, i think it was also important to know that you know at least i have have these things and then also uh like third one was uh, uh my mom was making these re- relaxation tapes that uh, I was listening, not not so much, but uh, just you know, taking uh, taking care of my myself and, and and relaxing. Do you think you were a pioneer in that scene in snowboarding, or did you see other people using sort of methods too, or were they just laid back, as you said, and yeah. went for the big things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well. Uh, Uh, it's hard to say because because of course I didn't uh, speak about it because I thought that you know this is too strange <laughs> uh, but um, I remember that uh, at least uh, people were doing yoga uh, like back in the day some some snowboarders which has like some like similar uh, techniques or, or or well different techniques but kind of uh, uh, you know just different tools uh, he- helping uh, so yeah uh, I would guess that <laughs> I was <laughs> doing something pioneer but you, you, you never know <laughs> Did it change you as a person? I, you first of all, I realized that you didn't really like to compete, but now after these methods, did you start liking it? Uh, yes, um, yes, I started to to like competing. Uh, I took <coughs> took maybe four or five, six years, and uh, and I'm I'm sure that people. Uh, You know, it just takes like some some people maybe it's shorter time, some people longer time. I'm I'm definitely sure that every one of us will will learn it and and can cope with the the pressure of of competing. It's not so, you know, some something like <laughs> something super super hard to do. Uh, of course, it's just uh, you know like. Uh, exposing yourself to the to the difficulties and, and and going out of the comfort zone and of course the when you go out of the comfort zone then then the comfort zone will will get bigger and uh, that's uh, that's how it works and uh, and of course like if you look at it from the brain perspective because brain uh, likes to you know do things that are really familiar to it and, and simple and easy so the more more you repeat the competition situation the more the brain gets used to it and and the the safer it feels many times uh, people speak about passion was this snowboarding a passion for you Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, really, really the the big love of my life and and really the the purpose of life. Of course, it's now <laughs> like a little bit <laughs> different perspective, uh, and uh, uh, I'm not snowboarding that much uh, during the winters. But I think it's really big, like importance, like as as a history and background and and really part of. Uh, who I am and and I think it shows well of course like the clothing and and I guess the attitude a little bit comes <laughs> comes from snowboarding 1994 you won the Finnish World Cup and the Finnish Championships how did it change you as a snowboarder um hmm mm, well uh I guess uh, just uh, like proving myself that I can be good in competitions and I can win and 
and be the best in, in competition. Uh, of course, that was also a process. and Because uh, it was actually quite hard to believe. Because uh, when I started competing, uh, uh, like, of course, like, like in, in those smaller, like Serena ski competitions, maybe it was a year or two that uh, I didn't do really well. But um, uh, meanwhile, I, I uh, concentrated that, you know, what's important for me in, in snowboarding. And it was uh, like being with friends and having fun and pushing each other uh, and, and learning new tricks. So <clears throat> I kind of like, I went to the competitions and, you know, that was an experience and uh, le like learning experience and then I you know kind of pushed away of the thought of competing and then I concentrated only <clears throat> riding and having fun because uh, and and I think afterwards thinking about it now uh, I think it was a really good idea because uh, uh, when I was do concentrating on the things that were giving most joy to myself it was like a constant motivation uh for for me and and it was really good for learning and then at some point uh i think well maybe if somebody would have asked like okay are you now ready for a competition for sure not but um I guess uh, I had concentrated so much of the essence of snowboarding that that was for me the, the most important things, the friends and having fun and, and, and the tricks. So kind of as a side product, I became uh, more ready for competitions and I, I started to uh, succeed in, in competitions quite like right away. Uh, but yeah, it, it took a time, took, took some time to, to realize that, you know, it's not just uh, like a one hit <laughs> wonder <laughs> type of thing. So, um, and I guess, uh, just, um, then the knowledge that you have earned, uh, kind of the title as Finnish cup and Finnish cup winner and, and Finnish champion, you know, it kind of also is a good, like a backbone that, okay, you know, I, I already have achieved this. So, and this is something like a, like a trampoline uh, to, to go to the, to the next level. Did it bring you any sponsorships or anything? Did it push you further as a snowboarder like that? Did it enable you to go? out from Finland and snowboard more. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I got some like a Finnish uh, distributor uh, sponsors uh, during the the season that I was competing in Finland and then uh, they they helped out to, to go to the first um, trip to World Cup and then uh, quite fast uh, the European or the worldwide um, teams uh, picked me up or I could jo join them and th things were, were moving on from there and they did move on 96 you won actually the world cup in half pipe yeah well, what after that How, did it have an impact on you um yeah of course it it was a big impact and it still uh, it still is a big impact and yeah I, I probably think about it every day and just uh like it's a good good memory and good good feeling um well um yeah what what it what it changed um Hmm. I guess it was it was actually like good and bad things because of course 
uh, it's good for your uh, self-esteem to to really, you know, have a kind of like concrete proof that you're you're the best of the world. Of course, in snowboarding, it's like the competitions uh, were not so important. It's more about um, the common respect of uh, riders, like from each other and, and also from the fans. But well, of course, it's <laughs> it's nice to nice to be good in 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 competitions as well. Uh, so yeah, yeah, really, really nice kind of like memory and and a good thing for self esteem and of course for for sponsors and and stuff like that. But then um, I I actually didn't probably realize it back in the days, but it was also. Um, like um um i don't know how how to say uh like in finnish it's like a kivireki it's like you know that you are dragging like this uh this big stone behind you because um kind of you knew that you know that that was the the best that you can get uh competition wise so like what's you know what's next <laughs> kind of like that there's no no other way that down uh from here and uh and actually i got got hurt um like one or two weeks after uh winning the world cup and um that injury never healed and and i and because of that i had to quit snowboarding uh maybe like five six years after so yeah it's yeah but but um i think it it has been a really big uh, learning experience as well that um because i i had maybe a little bit too big a uh, story in my mind about being the the world cup winner I don't mean that I was cocky or or you know like being too proud about myself or trying to make big number of myself. I don't think that not not at all. I think I was always the, the same same normal guy uh, as always. But for myself mentally, uh, that put uh, maybe a little bit too much pressure because I. I I was living the story of uh, of the World Cup winner and and it it gave some time. Of course, sometimes it was a, a good thing, but sometimes it was a little bit, you know, unnecessary uh, pressure to to do do things. And uh, back in the days, I I didn't have tools, or I I didn't even understand that that it was uh, something that was. Uh, uh ho- holding me uh back but um yeah nowadays it's it's a good realization that you know you, you don't need to get caught up in the the story or or the image or something you know that you would need to live up to the expectations that you think that other people have just you know concentrate on on who you are and and trust that you know that's enough i think that that's really big um, learning experience from from that 98 snowboarding went even bigger and it became an olympic sport i remember there were a lot of criticism and controversy about snowboarding being an Olympic sport, especially inside the sport, I think. What were your thoughts? Um, well, yeah, it, I think yeah, it was a big, big fuss, and I didn't like quite uh, understand it because it, like, for me, it was not so uh, not so big deal. Like, of course, I, I can understand both both point of views that like maybe the the so-called like hardcore snowboarders they were you know like i don't know like scared that snowboarding is getting too big or too popular it's not so you know underground anymore and and uh, 
of course you know that we would have to go under the skiing federation and and live uh, according to their rules and and of course well i, I don't even know all the the, the things in, in the background but I, i guess it was also like some some politics and and how uh like skiing the the skiing federation was was um uh what was their attitude towards snowboarders because maybe it was in the beginning it was not so appreciative it i think it was more that you know they smelt the money that <laughs> this is the new new big thing and we just you know like take it and and, and put it to the olympics and and uh, yeah of course i understand that point of view but then also I think you need to to think bigger that uh, snowboarding is a really fun sport and and good way for people to to you know be active and and meet people and and if snowboarding is in Olympics we can get more you know publicity around snowboarding and maybe even more people will start uh snowboarding and of course with more visibility there's maybe more sponsors for people that that can uh, do snowboarding as a living so there's different <laughs> sides of the coin and um, i think it's just a not like a natural way how how a sport is evolving and and of course it's fun to see how how it it's going with skateboarding <laughs> that that being in in olympics and and how how they you know live with it everybody's always not everybody but usually people are kind of afraid of the chains but as it seemed like in snowboarding it was just a natural development because it just became better sport and uh, good athletes around and it's of course it's very fun to watch <laughs> yeah and yeah. interesting uh, well how did it feel like being part of the olympics uh, i think yeah it was really really fantastic uh really nice nice experience you know there is no <laughs> no competition uh, li- like that um and uh, yeah of course it's it's something that you you've been watching yourself from the little kid and and know that you know it's it's uh, quite rare that it's it's happening so um yeah it was really really precious and i i really had had good time and and meeting athletes from different countries even like from other other sports and So yeah I'm I'm really really grateful uh, that yeah I, I could be part of it. Was it part of having fun and like you said you were already enjoying the competition so did it feel different did you have more pressure when you were at the Olympics where the Olympic committee or anything giving you more sort of a pressure when you're performing there? Mm. Uh maybe a little bit but uh, i think just you know just a little bit and it didn't affect uh, the competition at least i think it it was still the kind of like the core was still the the same you know because it was same friends and and of course you know you could sense a little bit more uh like a uh stressed out or tight feeling among uh the the snowboarders but i think it was more about uh you know just the fuss around that it was just a, like a different ty- type of like we we haven't experienced a competition that everything was well not everything but things were more strict and uh you know who who is going where and you know what's happening and so maybe that was one one point as well but yeah i would i would st- i would still say that it was competition like 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 whatever 
Just a little, little bit different twist to it. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned already about the injury you had. Uh, did you have a lot of injuries during your sport career? Um. Well, you, yeah. Well, what is <laughs> a lot <laughs> hard to say. Um. Of course, you know things happen like quite often. Some some little things, but uh, I think yeah, I was quite lucky that nothing like too dramatic or or serious. That maybe, maybe snowboarders that are are riding nowadays, you know, like they get. It's bigger air, air and, and bigger bigger hit and bigger <laughs> pain. <laughs> so yeah, I think it it was just quite quite normal uh, like athlete life. What about after injury when you get hit? You already had big airs back in the day. So I remember I was snowboarding and I w- was looking up to you guys doing the great tricks. We were just jumping from small jumps and still it's ah oh, it hurt me you hit yourself <laughs> a lot and when you especially when you get injured was it difficult to get back on the half pipe or in the half pipe or wherever mm. after injury yeah uh yes uh, well mm, the the injury after a winning world cup uh w- was was quite hard because um uh during my professional years it it never healed so i was always riding with uh, you know little pain like sometimes it was was really hard hard pain sometimes little so i think over over the time uh, you know the the pain was uh like taking away a little bit the, the joy joy of it and and of course um uh you i got more scared of trying new tricks because uh, i didn't want to get hurt more or or get get more pain so uh it was uh not not so <laughs> motivating <laughs> way of of riding but uh, i think that was a good um, uh learning experience this way that uh Even though having having the problems and the pain, it was still uh, super nice and, and good times. And and of course, I didn't progress uh, as a snowboarder as much um, uh, I would have liked to. But I think uh, as a, as a person, there was um, like really really good lessons and and just you know traveling and and meeting people in different countries that's like really like something that you cannot learn in school <laughs> when you're sitting just <laughs> in a classroom so uh, i think yeah just widening the perspective of life was uh even though with the pain it was uh, like from you know whole whole life life's perspective it was really really um, nice thing as a snowboarder also you were teaching people to snowboard am i right mm-hmm. uh, yeah. have you always been like that have you always wanted to help people because we come to your work what you do nowadays and it's mm. a big part of that uh, where you like that as a person uh well yes uh of course you know because i was shy, more shy back in the day i wasn't probably the first guy you know <laughs> like uh, trying to give give tips uh to people of course like the, the the closest friends for sure um but yeah i think it it it's also uh kind of like in the dna of of snowboarding that you are learning together and and you know you are cheering you know like yeah yeah that was a good trick a nice tweak or now you landed and you know like just commentating on you know what went better compared to to last time or stuff like that so um Yeah, I, I actually forgot the question. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> okay, we can we can continue. <laughs> and I've been speaking to a lot of athletes, and 
to be honest, uh, especially who's been in the higher level, for most of them, it's been quite difficult after their career ended. How was it with you when you really stopped competing, stopped sm- snowboarding? Was it difficult that time mm. after that? Yes, yes, it was really, really difficult. And um, well, of course, uh, because uh, it, it was already five or six years that uh, I was injured and, and riding with pain. I, I knew that, you know, it, it could be the next day that I, I need to stop. So I I was mentally like preparing myself to that day. But of course, you know, you, you cannot really prepare, <laughs> prepare yourself. And, um, I, and I think it's also maybe a little bit I was maybe doing it actually a little bit too long time. I, I di- wouldn't have needed so so much prepping for that, because um, you know we're humans and humans, you know they they get over things and you know it's not not so big deal. But but yeah, it, <laughs> but well, of course it's easy to say no, but but for sure it was uh, it was like the the biggest disaster uh, of my life. Uh, so far and and i was really really sad about it and and really you know had had to think think uh, you know knew that that who who am i and what what i want to accomplish and do and 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 stuff like that and uh, actually i was surprised that i was talking to uh to to my ex colleagues <laughs> retired snowboarders and uh, not not so many or 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 maybe not, not at all people were talking about it that it was hard thing uh to to stop because I, I don't know maybe they just well of course it's possible that they just didn't think that it was hard but maybe it was because you know they were kind of keeping the snowboarding cool and and you know relaxed attitude ah you know it's okay you know i'm like whoa this you know this really hurts you know (laughs) it sucks like super bad you know i'm so sad you know it's because it's the the love of the and passion of the life you know it's ending so but of of course you know uh, just to have have some close close friends and and family that that you can talk to about it it, it um, really helped and uh, of course uh, i started uh, doing snowboarding tv show it was kind of like i was still doing uh, like competitions and uh, i had the camera with me so after my own run i just uh, filmed uh, the rest of the riders and and interviewed <laughs> people so it was kind of like a mellow transformation um like fr- from uh pro athlete to to pro uh, tv tv dude uh, <laughs> but looking back it was actually that like yeah kind of like two, two sides of it uh it, it made the transition smoother but then i think i would have needed some you know some break and and some you know like a little bit stop and uh, you know like give myself you know compassion and about that i I was really you know like being hurt uh, about it and not just you know rush to you know do things so that kind of i could forget (laughs) get about uh, the, the whole thing so but but yeah <laughs> i survived so but uh, but i think it's yeah i w- i would hope that and, and i think nowadays it's um like the olympic committee or or the the national federations are are thinking about it more that what what they do with the ex uh, ex athletes and they got um, some uh, how, how to put them to school and and and, and help them with career i think it's really important and uh, i hope that people would get like coaching as well and so that they could you know like speak 
speak about and, and get some mental uh, skills and, and viewpoints how, how they you know manage and, and relate to the the difficulty of uh, like ending the the sport career you went for tv and filming and interviewing and you did that actually quite a bit almost 10 years <laughs> yeah asl Alex yeah. Tavara snowboarding yeah <laughs> uh, was it that that was your thing then uh, during that time where you're already developing these other ideas what are you going to do next or how did it go uh you mean like during Work snowboarding wise. Yeah, uh, when you were doing this uh, snowboarding TV show, and after that mm-hmm. you became a mindfulness ah, yeah. instructor, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. mental coach, and all these things. Yeah. Um, well, of course, there they were kind of um, like bubbling under things. Uh, of course, coming <laughs> again from from my mom and family, because my my mom is. Um, teaching business coaches and, and supervisors and, and mindfulness instructors so i was kind of living in that <laughs> that kind of scene and then you know like just hearing stories and hearing point of views and, and techniques um, along the way and and of course uh, i started doing mindfulness um, exercises and like meditations myself uh, along the way and um, yeah I think uh, um, maybe after like seven years six seven years that I I was doing TV so I I was because it was kind of like super stressful uh thing to do with the deadlines and it was hard to get money for for the the show and it, it was like always a big stressor that you had to like when you finish the the tv show in the springtime you know there's maybe one day celebration and then you start selling the show until the next uh Uh, fall or even the winter so the selling selling was really really big big part and you actually never knew that you know maybe just the last minute that is the is the show having enough enough money that you know it it will be (laughs) delivered and then when you when you get the money then it's you know of course a little bit too late to do the deadlines of the (laughs) actual shows and it was (laughs) but it it was a helpful um (laughs) experience to to cope with uh with the stress but um that that kind of led to yeah after yeah maybe six seven years uh i felt that you know this is enough and and also i I think i felt that you know i have given already so much that uh, you know that maybe my my creativity wasn't producing anything you know so new things but um uh then then i i got I was reading uh, Richard Branson's book, uh, Losing My Virginity, and uh, I, with that, uh, I I could go back to the kind of the roots of the snowboarding, and and I could you know refine uh, the joy and the, the love and passion for the sport. So I was still doing doing the show for for two more years, uh, but the yeah, bubbling under it was like the feeling that you know maybe i'm you know getting too old you know being you know night long with with youngsters in in the streets filming handrails you know <laughs> uh, i think i i wanted to do do some something more and you know give give uh give something to the new new audiences so uh that that that's when the last two years of the tv show was was kind of uh the, like starting i was all already starting some some uh, lectures and like public speeches and and stuff like uh, that and then yeah i i thought that wow this is 
this is really something that I, I want to do. Because with the TV show, I was inspiring like many, many people. And then like with coaching and, and lecturing, I could like m- motivate people and, and help them to, to succeed and, and reach their goals. So I think that that was uh, something that really started to be important for me. And also, uh, uh, it's hard to to get um, like when when you're winning competitions, it's really hard to replace that feeling with anything else. But I realized that actually. Uh, when I'm coaching people and, and they get the realization that really, you know, helps them to, you know, become better person or, or get over, you know, some difficulty. It's actually, you know, even better because I am not just, you know, succeeding myself, but I can be part of kind of like this team uh, of success. So, yeah, yeah it, it's really, really... Uh, yeah, feel, feels really, really important and and uh, good and and also natural kind of like a process from 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 the sports sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> public speaking, because you are a public speaker also and a keynote speaker. What were your topics at the beginning? Uh, well, uh, topics um, <laughs> was actually funny that I thought that. Uh, I, I actually never wanted to be so much in in publicity, uh, but I thought that you know I am you know enough known person and an interesting person that you know just being me you know <laughs> people will <laughs> will order me to to give give out lectures and and of course the things didn't <laughs> didn't quite turn out <laughs> that. <laughs> Um, that way, um, <laughs> so, but, um, uh, yeah, in the beginning I was, uh, telling a lot of, uh, stories uh, about snowboarding and, and what I learned and also stuff that I have, um, uh, put into work life or, or, you know, ordinary life, um, uh, also, yeah, uh, the techniques that I I used that was uh, already a big big part. But of course, it was you know kind of a little bit naive things and things things are <laughs> moving moving forward. Uh, but I think the the essence uh, still is you know that the the skills that you need to you know be be the best best version of yourself and and how to succeed and and how to find the things that uh, you are good at and 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 the, the things that you are really passionate and and stuff like that uh and yeah the, these kind of mind skills uh, and and how to use your strengths mm. And uh, yeah, like growth mindset, stuff like that. So, and uh, I've been uh, studying uh, positive psychology and and uh, social psychology, mindfulness, of course, like coaching and and and, and uh, different stuff, self self compassion, and uh, so th- those are something that I I also. Uh, talk about and and also solution focused uh, perspective that's one one good team as well what do you think as a professional athlete and because you go high highs and high lows also because you get (laughs) the big kicks and then you fail and you feel down after doing tricks or after whatever sports so you can learn to live in that situation that there are really great moments and suddenly everything is mm-hmm. totally done and crashed. You think you, as an athlete, you're able to actually bring those uh, ideas, those mindsets uh, when you think about career as a worker after mm-hmm. the career as an athlete? 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, definitely. Because um, I think, yes, yeah, as you said, in, in sports, you really get, uh, you know, big contrast and you get, uh, get it like super, you know, fa- fast intervals because like, you know, things and competitions happen, you know, like, like constantly. So you really you need uh, need the skills to to cope with uh, difficulties and and really cope with them quite fast, so that you know kind of like the next day you are, you know you have like uh, let let go of the uh, failure. So for sure, I think it's it's really uh, big big things and techniques and and stories. To, to share in, in, in business world. Because um, hopefully, well, of course, you know, it, things are getting, you know, like faster and faster in, in the business world as well. And, and you know, there, there's coming more, more, more difficulties, of course, more, more succeeds are, are coming as well. Uh, but because you need to do things faster and you don't have more, uh, you know, maybe enough time to prepare your work or your, your stuff, you know, there, there's, there's gonna be, uh, failures for sure. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, the skills, how to, you know, bring yourself back, uh, from down to, to, to back up. Yeah. It will be, more and more important in the future for people so that they can really lead their self, lead their mind and body and not, not just uh, get stuck uh, in the failure. And just, just as an example, one, uh, one thing that I, I do mostly nowadays uh, when I fail is uh, this self uh, compassion uh, practices. Uh, uh, one point is that you know I really like stop and and feel that okay how does this this feel in my mind and body and and really you know like take it in like okay this sucks and this really hurts you know it feels like you know there's fire burning inside me or somebody stabbing or and just being being with it and and then. Also being aware that how is the, the inner voice, maybe there's the critique just going on like, oh, you're such a failure and stuff like that. And just, you know, noticing it and, and just, yeah, letting it go and, and choosing uh, like nice, friendly, loving words towards yourself. Because of course, like we, we already know how to do that to other people. But for ourselves, we are sometimes so crucial, so so uh, so cruel uh, and and mean. So just being aware that what's happening inside my my head and really choosing, you know, what do I want to give give to myself? So those nice words uh, are you know something that uh, can help to move forward, and then also. Uh, uh to kind of uh, i do this uh meditation and i you know i know that this you know <laughs> might sound <laughs> like super uh i don't know uh pink or something <laughs> not not maybe so manly but i don't care <laughs> that i uh, uh i put my my hand uh, uh like kind of on top of my heart and really like feel the the warmth of the hand and actually the physical feeling of the warmth and the touch uh that reminds me that okay this is the moment that things are sucking bad and you know this is just part of the, li- the life and in this this situation what i need is uh really to 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 keep up the friendly attitude towards myself like the hand giving like warmth to to the chest you know the same way i can give kind of this mental 
uh, warmth to myself. And and usually it, it's quite fast that you notice that oh, okay, I'm actually feeling feeling quite okay. And uh, so so you you have more uh, kind of stability to to go forward. Of course, like uh, and and maybe it's a little bit in in Finnish culture and also in 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 competitive sports that uh, people think that when you are failing you need to punish yourself so that you don't make the same mistake and the paradox of that is that when people do it they still get the results they are beating themselves up and writing to the you know like a piece of paper i suck i suck hundred or thousand times and still you know of course there will come next time that they will succeed or win and then they think ah oh, i just need to write i suck i suck so that i i succeed the next <laughs> time so they they create these beliefs so that you know it needs to be painful so so that they <laughs> they can succeed again but you know i just want to wake up people that you know there's a way which doesn't hurt and it helps you even faster to get the good results so why not try it <laughs> <laughs> do you think that people should accept their feelings more like you said that you're just feeling yourself and letting these feelings come and go because many times as i know myself also when i was a player and you kind of like you get these feelings but you sort of try to avoid them and push them away that don't accept these feelings and just mm. you know it's not me you gotta gotta just yeah. you know kick them away and get through with it yeah uh yeah i think yeah people just get too caught up with the thoughts and the feelings that you know they think that you know it's it's their identity and that way they kind of get scared like you know i i cannot be a person who is feeling failure or or feeling fear but um well this comes from my own mindfulness uh, background is that you know just um uh, kind of like taking this little step backwards like taking little space between the feelings and, and the thoughts you know i'm not taking myself so seriously and i'm i'm you know keeping things flowing because you know you know it's part of the life to to feel you know many different feelings and it's not bad thing to to feel bad bad feelings and the paradox is that you know when you are open to to difficult feelings you know they are just easier passing away i know it's easy to say and people probably know it you know um uh that okay in a knowledge level they know that oh well this is how it is but then maybe they try it out in in a couple times they're like oh no this doesn't work <laughs> but <clears throat> but you need to <clears throat> remember that it's also a skill like a mental skill how to be with different thoughts and and feelings and and life situations and uh, just trusting that you know things will <laughs> will will move forward and and when you are not getting caught or or trying trying to push push away some thought or feeling uh then actually yeah, it, it gets easier to get past that uh difficulty you think it's ego that's is stopping people to do it or are they just afraid because I know myself I've been doing more soul search nowadays and it's actually quite painful when you realize these things and when you really start figuring out who you are and how to deal with your emotions and things mm. it's not an easy path to be honest as yeah. far as I've yeah. noticed yeah yeah that, that's that's definitely true um I can just you know speak from my own expertise and uh, um speaking from the mindfulness expert uh, po- point of view that um uh, because uh like expect uh uh, <laughs> uh acceptance 
is a big uh, part and, and point of view uh, in mindfulness um, and just letting things be how they are um, that that has you know helped me uh, to to cope with with things you know it uh, I think in, in Finland when when we say uh, acceptance hyväksyminen I think it's like a really big word at least for me it was you know like really big thing that it took me like I don't know a couple of years that I could really you know understand what it, what it meant to really accept things you know that I'm not you know just being passive like oh okay I'm just accepting whatever you know bring it on <laughs> no it's not it's not like that it's just that you know you kind of uh, let go of fighting against the current reality against the facts you're just losing losing energy and the attitude uh, because sometimes the thoughts and feelings they are nasty and you don't want to experience them but then the accepting attitude can be your helpful friend to kind of walk with with those things and and you know maybe you realize that oh maybe th- this isn't that scary because you you start to become more friend uh with your yourself so but yeah i, I yeah i guess it is some kind of path or or you know strengthening a skill so you you, you just need to be patient that <laughs> you know it, it's it's going on a good good direction and you know and, and there's there's going to be bumps bumps on the road and and stuff like that people are talking about the mindfulness more you hear the word mindfulness uh, a lot more nowadays than let's say a couple of years mm. back and uh, if somebody comes to you and asks you about mindfulness is there some words you can put into it or is it a longer way to figure mm. out what it really means <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's really good question and i think it's always a little bit different answer to it uh like uh, you know short short answer is like what does it feel you know when you you're in sauna and, and put water to the stove you know you feel it you know you're you're there or or when you are <clears throat> walking or or skiing you know how does it feel uh on on your body the the moment when when your body is moving when when the feet are touching the ground that's kind of like the smallest example of of mindfulness you know we we everybody knows how to be you know fully present with non-judgmental accepting attitude you know we we've been children and they are really good at it of course they are not conscious that they are <laughs> doing mindfulness but you know they are really being being in the moment uh <clears throat> so um Yeah, I, <laughs> I think. Um, what what else? Um, yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> you're doing mindfulness uh, coaching, and uh, you're an instructor in companies also. How is it nowadays? You've been doing it now many years already, and you see an improvement of it, or uh, is it more known for the workers that this? could actually help us. If mm. I think about, let's say, like we spoke in Finland, Finnish mm. way of acting mostly, I think, male persons. Exactly. They are pretty stubborn. And oh, I don't, what is this mm. new mm. voodoo thing? Mm. I, I don't believe yeah. in it. Yeah. So has it been a difficult path? Um, actually, well, not not so much. I think, um, um Well, in, in the early years, there was maybe a little, little bit more resistance, uh, just because people didn't know what what mindfulness is. But of course, um, because there's so much uh, this scientific research backing up 
like a brain scans and, and stuff like that like 700 uh, like studies coming every year so that's a really uh, and of of course there's like um uh like companies uh, hospitals army schools you know uk is is claiming to be the mindful nation so there's mon- many examples that you know where people are using uh mindfulness so it, you know it, it gives people people the sense that okay you know this has some some proof that there are some benefits to, to the uh to doing the exercises and many people are doing it so <laughs> you know <laughs> it's not just wishing you know that things were were positive or nice it's it's nothing like like that it's um well of course you know we can choose to to pick the the positive attitude towards uh things but we are not trying to force things to be uh be positive but uh yeah actually uh, the the early days uh the the people who were most um, uh skeptic about mindfulness usually they at the end they turned out to be like most uh you know enthusiastic about the, the subject like asking more and and asking like where, where do i get can get these uh, exercises and and stuff like that so in in my experience uh, I think the Finnish people are still you know, like can be really open minded and, and 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 listen and and just try try it out and of course you know it's like anything else it's maybe not something for everybody you know they they choose to do something else and and that's totally perfect as well you do also mental coaching for athletes and sports clubs. Can you tell me an like an example of mental coaching what you do with the groups for example for the for a team? Mm. Um well, uh example could be uh finding out uh, the core values and and uh the the kind of the driving forces, the you know, the common goal of the the group the the purpose and um yeah of course uh like different skills for for uh, like to prepare for the competition or or the game or also things how to cope uh during the the play or 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 the uh or whatever <laughs> you are doing and also you know after and uh, um like if if you've had had like uh difficulties how to get over it and and also like how to recover like mentally and and how it affects also uh, physically uh to you so that 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 kind of uh subject I see athletes they're doing very well occasionally in uh, smaller competitions and when it comes to this like you were in the Olympics uh, bigger events and there's huge crowd and there's TV cameras and etc cetera, etc cetera, and they they actually they totally fail. Mm-hmm. You think that's a mental issue? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's most definitely or or I think the the biggest biggest thing behind this is mental uh, skills and um, I think uh, like couple most important things for for those kind of events or, or situation is is that you practice uh, that situation because uh, uh, like many athletes they you know they have this very quiet and safe place where they are themselves or in a small group and they are just practicing and practicing and and of course they are really good at what they do but then they don't practice their mind state 
of being in in the com- competition so they should make the the practice more like uh, uh competition uh, that it would be the, the same kind of setup uh so that you know they're they are kind of prepared like for example uh when i started uh, my public sp- speeches uh, one, the one, uh, one thing that I noticed uh, when I, w- I was rehearsing the, the speeches over and over, like t- 10, 10, 20, 30 times or even more. And I, I still, like when I was uh, on the stage, you know, I, I, and I had even notes and I had the PowerPoint and I still forgot what, what to say. And... Um, uh, I I just realized that um, like one thing that was different was that uh, my eyes and and my whole posture was different uh, in front of the audience. I could not be, you know, like going down to the notes and being there just by myself. Uh, So I started to practice the speeches. I put um, pictures of people's faces kind of like the same level as I could, I sh- I would be watching watching them live on stage, and I practiced, you know, you know how how they affect me, and 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 when there's people around me, how does that feel, and and where's when when there is a little bit, I I made a mental exercise that gave me this sense of stress, and then I started giving out the speech, and I was talking to the heads, the, the, the pictures, so I learned how to give out the speech while watching uh, the people, and that really kind of like helped me to access the stories in, in my brain, uh, like differently and gave me the kind of the the courage to deliver uh the speech so <laughs> that just just the one uh, one example well that's a very inter- interesting way and good experience to learn for yeah. me also yeah for sure what about you have had a big events in your life of course you became that world cup champion the number one ranking snowboarder in the world but also in life you are also a father and you uh, you have a daughter so how how did it affect you as a person as a human and uh, well as a person yeah. um i think yeah it was funny that when when my daughter uh got born like some some people said that they are like super scared that oh what am what am I doing and stuff like that but somehow I just felt that you know uh, this is just what I've been born born to do and was you know trusting the the situation and uh, yeah I guess it um, it gave like more um, like softer values uh, to life and and kind of uh, got the focus away from just doing doing uh, like work and and career uh yeah i i think yeah it was really actually good moment because i was uh it was the last years of doing the tv show as well uh the kind of like the end of of the most stressful like work uh work career uh, I had so yeah somehow it was a, a transition that I really needed myself and and at, as at the same time gave me yeah these softer values and and, and really committing time to to be with family and that really helped me to to um, get over that uh like a, a ending the tv show and also i think if i would have continued continued the tv show maybe it would have been even like burnout for me uh, at some point so it's really like lifesaver to 
get get the new perspective and, and softer values later some years i don't know i don't know when but you took a different path with your wife and you went separate ways uh, was it difficult times for you did you need to use your methods in that day and how yeah. did you cope with that yeah um yeah it was uh, one and a half years ago and uh, it was uh, interesting because that was so kind of dark time that uh like kind of i knew that i had so many tools that could help me out but somehow they didn't work in that situation um but i just knew that you know like you know at least i have these tools that kind of are my safety net so I don't know. It, it was strange. I I didn't really uh, like try too much at these different tools. I thought that you know this is just something that I really you know pff, dive to the deep <laughs> deep end and really you know like feel the shit and you know all the pain and and stuff like that and. And I remember at at one point when I was so so tired and and exhausted, uh, and uh, I could not not uh, get sleep, I I I would pet my other finger with my my other finger, kind of like as a as a sign of uh, self compassion, like oh okay this is this really sucks and you know that I just need to be you know friend friend with myself and this is just uh you know a phase that uh, you get over um and it was actually interesting as well that i have never been so kind of in the dark waters that um i remember like driving a car and thinking like well okay if i if i would you know hit the wall and died you know yeah I, you know <laughs> i wouldn't care so much <laughs> so um uh, now you know just to you know give you an example that it was quite extreme thought and 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 feeling uh and the the main thing is that you know you sometimes you can bury under those kind of thoughts and feelings and really lost it uh, and well of course it was hard to to cope with those things but just the knowledge that i i went through that and it was actually the painful period was so much shorter that i i could have ever ever imagined i don't know if it's just the luck or if it's the tools or the the safety networks uh family and and friends or or everything uh together but um uh that was uh really important uh learning about the resilience of of people that you know when you get knocked out and you you just get up get get back up and and even even stronger because i i i never could have even imagined uh, that life could be different and i could have uh you know different things that make me even more happy than than ever before of course there's there's really really difficult things and and nasty things especially for for our, our daughter but um but i think overall and and in long term it will be you know like better for for everybody you think this helps also you as a worker when you're instructing people or coaching people that you really realize when you actually yourself went to that deep of course nobody wants to really mm-hmm. feel that but in the end that we are really individuals and everybody needs probably different tools in different situations that there's no one way that we can cope with situations yeah yeah and i think it's um just for people that, or like for for me as a coach or, or a person to to cope with with another another people who have had you know similar or even worse 
uh, worse uh, worse things it helps me to relate to that and and also the other person uh you know they can trust that okay this is not just some guy who is jumping on the happiness boat and <laughs> lo- loving the sunshine <laughs> just just that you know that this is a real person that you know life life happens to every every one of us and speaking of life i need to actually <laughs> go and get my daughter from the school quite fast okay yeah <laughs> we are ready. oh we went a bit over the schedule sorry about that Uh, well, I give you one last question then, so then we can we can uh, finish this. And uh, what about now? What what makes you happy and joyful? What makes you get out of bed in the morning? Hmm. Um, yeah, that's a that's a really good question and, and a good question to think about every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I guess. Ah, uh, it's just uh, the the interest uh, of of human life and 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 learning, and well, of course, daughter is is one one point, and and one point is that I'm doing the the job that I really really love and and being passionate about, and that uh, knowing that I can give give something uh, to people, not saying that I am special that you know that you know i i i i help people or or give give something not that but you know it's just that i know that i can be part of uh, of that that process uh, and also that i have courage nowadays to to challenge myself in different things and situations and and also learning new new things and, and putting myself into new situations that that I can grow and also at the same time knowing that you know that I have limitations and and uh, bad days and some days it's it's better just to you know let go of goals and just uh, the best thing is to you know go back to back to sleep or or something like that so really being sensitive that what is uh, uh, not, not just the, the short term but also like longer term what is what, what do I need right now so I'm not just the, the, the typical uh, motivational speaker who is like yeah go for the goal and you know <laughs> of course you need that but i think you need also the touch touch of life and and really opening up all the aspects of life and you know would be foolish and and black and white to say that you know you need to just think about you know these certain ways every morning that you wake up it's more also being open and also like a beginner's mind that okay wow this is new day what what is what is coming up and and uh just letting letting things happen uh as themselves thank you very very much for sharing me your thoughts and your a lot of your life and uh, uh I consider you as a very inspirational person and uh, to be honest I've learned stuff today just talking to you and I'm I'm positive that you can really help people out over there and also the listeners now because for me already this has been helpful to speak with you and so I thank you I I really appreciate this talk thank you very much <laughs> thank you Tommy yes it was really nice and and precious time to be here with you and you have a really nice gift of uh you know presence and and really listening to me so it gave me a good appreciative experience and i hope the listeners enjoyed as well and i hope all the best for everybody i'm positive they do thank you very much (laughs) thank you